a tēnā koe e te pāpa, um, te pau o tā tātou iwi o kaitau. Uh, nō reira e te iwi e te whanau, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'd like to invite our minita, uh, our minister, uh, please to the, to the podium, uh, Megan Woods. Tina koutou katoa, te whare i tu nei, te marae i waho nei, kua awarua, tina koutou. I te upoku i te tepe nei, tina koe. I rau rangatera mā, tina koutou katoa. Thank you very much for having me back in Southland today. I'm going to follow uh, Michael's lead and say I'd like to acknowledge everybody in this room, but I would like to especially acknowledge our mayors that are here today, Mayor Shadbolt and Mayor Hicks, and everybody else who has joined for this most important conversation. It's so good to see the range and calibre of people passionate about Murihuku's future. And I'd like to acknowledge the team at Murihuku Regeneration, Regeneration Collective for pulling together this event and for having me along to speak. And this event comes at just the right time. I know there is lingering uncertainty in the region around the future of the TY Point site, its remediation, and its future uses. Southlanders deserve certainty about the future of their region. Murihuku Runaka have been right at the forefront of this conversa conversation since the first closure announcement in July of last year. And I know many people in this room have attended hui organised by Murihuku Regeneration over the past 18 months and this work has been a major driving force of the transition so far. Like Murihuku Regeneration, our government is committed to working with this region to build its economic, social and, and environmental resilience to shocks like the closure of a major regional employer. The work of the collective in articulating an alternative vision for the region has guided our officials if they have worked with the region on that just transition. Let me be clear, our government is committed to a just transition for Southland. For delivering the goals of that just transition process is, imp is as important now as it was in July 2020 building new industries, new pathways to work, improving the community's ability to manage change themselves, setting Southland up for the future, this work is all the more vital in the face of the ongoing uncertainty around the future of the New Zealand aluminium smelter. We see a future for this region that is based on high skill, high wage jobs that contribute to decarbonising our economy and helping us tackle the challenge of climate change. Southland makes an enormous contribution to New Zealand's economy and we want to see that contribution continue into the future. And we acknowledge Naitahu's role as a treaty partner and the vision that you have for your region as a thriving green energy hub. And thank you for your articulation of that, Tatipane. We also acknowledge the commitment that you as a tribe have to real and meaningful climate action. Thank you for the work that you do here. We acknowledge all the work and thinking that is happening locally, and we want to continue to work with you to achieve this vision. And we see this vision aligning with our work as a government on renewable energy. We expect to see projects emerge from the work programme we have underway here through this Just Transitions work programme. Seeing these projects through will require local businesses, local government, iwi and central government to work together in genuine partnerships. We are up for that work and we look forward to progressing it together. I first, my first real exposure to this idea of just transitions hap happened at the Paris Climate Talks in 2015, which I was lucky enough to attend. I wandered off to one of the side events in, um, run by the International Trade Union Confederation um, on just transitions. 
And there I saw Can Canadian miners banging the table saying they wanted a more ambitious climate deal. I was struck by two things as the veteran of many Labour Party conferences where we'd seen our mining unions line up on one side to speak to a remit and our environmental members of our party on the other side was how do we get us some of these miners um, into our party? How do we change our thinking? How do we move away from thinking it's climate or jobs? How do we bring these things together? And the conversations that I had with the people that were working on this in countries like Canada, like the United States, was that our union movement globally was starting to see that there are no jobs on a dead planet, that there has to be plans underway for how it is we look after communities and how it is that we look after workers as the world decarbonises and changes around us. Being a child of the 1980s means there's several enduring legacies for me, one of which is one of the first albums I ever bought was a Madonna album, but the other is I saw the world change too rapidly around me. I saw the people in my community in Christchurch and Addington lose their jobs as change happened too quickly and there was a cliff edge set up. What our responsibility as a government to do is to make sure that we have planning in place for communities and for workers as decarbonisation change comes. So that is why we have a number of work programmes underway here to support Southland's move to a more innovative, sustainable and resilient future. The innovation and science system also has a vital role to play in building this resilience. For the research, science and innovation system to safeguard our future health, environment and prosperity, we need to ensure that it is future focused and fit for purpose. Last month I was proud to launch Te Ara Pairangi, or Future Pathways Green Paper, for consultation. We want to build on the parts of the science system that has served us well and enhance the parts that aren't working as well as they could. And this consultation covers a range of themes related to the research system. We're exploring how we can set priorities effectively to support our national goals. We are seeking to determine how we can honour our treaty obligations and give life to Māori research aspirations and we are assessing how funding and institutional models can ensure our research infrastructure and institutions are resilient and flexible. And our international science partnerships will play a major role in delivering national and regional ambitions. And I note that um, I note Professor Sally Brooker will be speaking later today. Professor Brooker's work to build international research links with German counterparts supported by the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment and the German Federal Ministry of Research and Innovation is an exciting example of the value of international cooperation in tackling major global challenges like the energy transition that is occurring here in Southland. As everyone here knows, the energy system has played a major role in Southland's development. And as the world decarbonises, the region's natural strengths in clean energy will become more and more important. Hydrogen in particular has captured the imagination of many regions. Responding in part to these regional ambitions, the government has a busy hydrogen work programme. In Tatapene, we do not believe that our future lies in importing hydrogen. We understand the potential that we have here in Te Waiponamu and Aotearoa to produce clean green hydrogen. First, like many other countries, we have published a vision for the use of hydrogen in our economy. We're now working on a roadmap for the development of a domestic hydrogen industry. The first stage of this work is to model the scenarios for hydrogen supply and demand in New Zealand. This work will be completed later this year. The second stage in the development of the roadmap is to determine the right size for our hydrogen economy. Second, we are taking steps to ensure our standards and regulations are suitable for the use of hydrogen in a safe and secure manner. 
And third, we are directing government investment to start up hydrogen projects with wider public benefits. Already several firms in New Zealand are actively investing in hydro hydrogen projects and trials, and some with government assistance. To date, most of the hydrogen projects undertaken in New Zealand have been smaller scale pilots or demonstration projects. We are now seeing growing interest in larger scale and commercial projects. We have an opportunity as a country to shape how this potentially major industry evolves and the outcomes that we want to see from its development. In addition to our work on the hydrogen economy, this government is working to increase renewable generation around the country, support distributed generation and develop renewable ready network infrastructure. We are also creating a stable policy and regulatory framework for transition related infrastructure to give investors and communities the certainty they need to make long term decisions. This government will continue to work with Southland to make the most of these opportunities. The just transition is a chance for the community to articulate a clear vision for the next few years and beyond. I encourage everyone involved in this process to work constructively and to develop well-considered and achievable initiatives to deliver the resilience and certainty that this region needs and this region deserves. The next step in the just transition is the release of the work plan, setting out some early in initiatives and next steps in the process. I expect to be back in Murihuku early next year to launch this plan and the next step in our process. Southland needs to come together to work out what investments and policy changes are needed from central government, local government, iwi, the private sector and others to deliver that just transition. Those talks that I went to in Paris talked about just transitions being a tripartite uh, um, arrangement between industry, government and unions. In New Zealand, I think we're showing that a just transition in New Zealand has to ensure that iwi are at the table. And I think we are showing that very clearly how that brings such strength to the process down here in Murihuku. So thank you for your work. The work plan will set out how the government will work with the region to make this happen. So thank you again for having me here today and for this opportunity to speak. And I look forward to carrying on these conversations over the coming months as we work together to build a more sustainable, prosperant and resilient future for Murihoku. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, for that. Um, it was interesting in your korero, all I heard was you're paying for it, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs>